These are the Meta Cross Ray-Ban Smart Glasses, Meta's latest addition to their hardware collection, and they are honestly one of my favorite pieces of tech so far this year, and I know the year's only just started, but these are really good. These glasses are some of the most gimmicky, coolest, and yet most useful things I've ever bought. So let's talk about them. Unboxing the glasses and setting them up is dead simple. On the box, you'll see the Ray-Ban Cross Meta logo, some text with the style of lenses you chose, a bunch of terms and conditions, and some information about the sizing and the lenses that you picked. Pulling on the cardboard zipper tab reveals a tagline, telling you what you can do with the things, and opening the box further reveals the carrying case, which you then open to get to the glasses. The charging case is really nice. It's very high quality and pretty much looks exactly the same as a standard Ray-Ban's carrying case. Uh, just with some extra tech inside. There's a light on the front around where the lid clips onto the case to display the charging indicator, similar to an AirPods case, and there's a USB Type-C port at the bottom for charging. The case charges the glasses from 0 to 100 in 75 minutes, or from 0 to 50 in around 20 minutes, through these connectors that line up with the nose pad of the glasses. Once the case is dead after giving 8 full charges to the glasses, it takes around 3.5 hours to fully charge. There's a lot of room in the case once the glasses are in there. I'm able to fit the included cleaning cloth, which has a really nice Ray-Ban cross matter logo on it, and even an AirTag in there without impacting the ability to charge or house the glasses. I feel like now is a great time to mention the configuration that I got. I went for the matte black colorway in the Wayfarer style and I sprung for the G15 green transition lenses. I also just got the standard large size. These have a ton of options for colorways, styles, and lenses, and they even have prescription lens options. If I wasn't getting these, I'd probably get these nice blue ones that are like transparent, lets you see all the tech inside. They're really cool. Once you put the glasses on and scan the QR code to download the MetaView app, all you need to do is sign in with the Meta account, either through a dedicated Meta account or through Facebook or Instagram and select your glasses in the list to pair them. After that, you're all set to start using them. Now the MetaView app is pretty good. The home tab shows you the battery and connection status of your glasses and prompts you to import new media while also showing you tips and features of your glasses. The media tab shows you photos and videos imported into the app, which for some reason don't like reference your photo library. It stores them twice, once in meta view, once in the photos, um, but they can be set to auto delete. It's also kind of annoying if you're posting to Instagram, you only get the shot with Ray-Ban if you import from the meta view app. Eh. First world problem. If it's enabled, the Meta AI tab allows you to view transcripts of your past conversations, and the settings tab lets you change the settings, while also showing the battery percentage and some more details about your glasses in the case. The settings tab is also where you'll add more glasses if you have more than one pair. Lucky. The build quality of these feel really nice. I've never owned a pair of Ray-Bans before, so I don't have a direct point of comparison, but these are some of the nicest glasses that I've personally worn. They're only slightly thicker and heavier than standard sunglasses, but they still feel very comfortable to wear. When I first started wearing them, I did notice some discomfort on the top of my ears after wearing them for extended periods of time, but eventually you get used to it and that just kind of fades away. The transition lenses are excellent, and they let me use the glasses inside without looking totally insane, uh, but they definitely don't get as dark as the standard sunglasses, and I wouldn't get them if you're only going to be wearing them outside. Uh, that's if you can get the transition lenses at all. Um, they seem to be totally out of stock everywhere right now. The glasses are also IPX4 water resistant, and I've been able to wear them during intensive workouts and in light rain without any issues. Just remember to completely dry them off uh, before putting them back in the charging case. And that X in X4 means there is no official dust resistance. So maybe be careful on the beach and in dusty areas. Now we get to talk about the real party tricks of these, with the first one being the camera, because that has easily been my most used and absolute favorite feature of these. Just above your left eye is an ultra wide camera that takes photos at 12 megapixels and records 1080p video up to 60 seconds long. And the quality coming out of these is seriously impressive. They're obviously not competing with the commonplace 48 megapixel sensors and higher on modern flagships, and you won't have any fancy features like telephoto zoom or things like that, but these are more than good enough for creating content on short form platforms and for just capturing things happening around you. The photos are pretty standard. There isn't really much depth of field and they start losing detail pretty quick once you start to zoom in or crop, uh, but they're great for capturing photos of landscapes and for wide scenes. Because of the really wide FOV of the sensor, basically anything you're looking at is going to be in frame. These literally just turn your eyes into viewfinders. Now the video on these is what surprised me the most because it is seriously impressive. On paper, it's nothing special, capturing video at 1080p in 30fps, but it looks really good. The main thing that's really impressive for me is the level of stabilization coming out of the lenses. The videos on these are very smooth, even when you're walking or running. They're also shockingly good at capturing like spatial audio with the five hidden microphones that are scattered around the glasses. It's not like certified Dolby Atmos or anything like that, but it does an excellent job for stereo audio. And it's really noticeable when you watch videos with headphones or even just with the glasses on. Okay, so right now I just have the glasses kind of standing on my tripod and I'm gonna hopefully 
be able to capture how good the spatial audio capture is on these. I'm just walking around. Currently, I'm kind of behind, diagonal. I um, wear headphones for this part, if you couldn't tell already. But hopefully, that kind of gives a demonstration to how good the spatial audio capture on these is with those five microphones that are built into the camera. Taking photos on these is as easy as hitting the capture button once on the right temple or holding it down to take a video. The cameras do struggle a bit in low light, uh, especially the stabilization. It's not less stable, it's just more obvious that it's being applied. Photos in low light are a bit more noisy and washed out, but it's nothing unusable. If you can, stick to your phone for night shots. But if you can't use your phone, well the best camera is the one you have on you. The only thing that really annoys me about the videos and photos is that the lens is positioned vertically which makes it really difficult to use the captured footage on basically any platform that isn't Facebook or Instagram, um, which I'm sure works out wonderfully for Meta. It's really unfortunate because I love recording unboxings with these. My Meta Quest 3 arrived the same day as the glasses, video coming soon, and I was, <laughs> it was really nice to be able to capture the unboxing without needing to hold a phone or look at a camera monitor. I just got to enjoy it and I still got to film the whole thing. I mean, realistically, I'll probably keep using these and just make a graphic to make the vertical video look better in landscape, but it would be really nice to be able to just shoot landscape straight out of the camera. The position of the lens also means that the brim of hats can get in the way, which is annoying because if you couldn't tell already, I do like wearing hats. I also think it would be really cool if like, you know, in a future generation or something, if they replaced the, uh, if they repositioned the light on the right eye and changed, like added another camera and then they could do some spatial video slash photo stuff and like similar to how you can take them with Apple Vision Pro, and I'm sure they'd love to just funnel that straight into the Quest photo library, but that would probably make the price of these skyrocket. Party trick number two are the speakers that allow for open-ear audio while you're using the glasses. Audio sounds crisp and clear through them, especially when you're listening to speech, like on a phone call or talking to Siri or the Meta AI. Music sounds really balanced, although the speakers are lacking in the bass department. You can still hear the bass, but that's all you can do, you can just hear it. You won't feel a bass, even compared to something like AirPods Pro. I can't find any frequency response graphs for these, unfortunately, for those people who can look at those and understand them. <laughs> these are not audiophile headphones, just know that. Even without much bass, it's still really nice to be able to listen to music and uh, other audio without having a set of headphones in. It just kind of feels less disrespectful, if that makes sense. It's nicer to talk to people when you have something playing uh, on the glasses compared to AirPods, even with all the conversational awareness stuff that's built into the AirPods. It also has the personal benefit of just not being entirely closed out when I'm listening to music, which is really nice. They get decently loud, but the lack of bass becomes much more discernible when you start increasing the volume. At max volume, people around you can definitely start to hear what you're listening to, but at around 40% volume or lower, it becomes very difficult for others to hear, unless they're like, right next to you. It's not doing anything special like bone conduction or similar techniques, it's just using some really well positioned speakers. So what I'm going to do now is a quick test of the bleed on these. I'm just recording from my MacBook, my MacBook microphone, because uh, I put the tripod away. Uh, I'm just going to play a song at full volume through these and then 50% to kind of give you an idea. Obviously this is a silent room, so it's going to be a lot less noticeable if you're in a loud environment like a shopping center or, or I don't know. That's all I got. Full volume. This is about 50%. So you can see at 100% volume, it's very audible from this distance. And then at 50%, you can kind of tell something's playing, but it's harder to discern what it is. Controlling audio is really easy on these as well. And it's done using the touchpad on the right temple or through the AI system, which I'll get into soon. Tapping once pauses or plays the current song. Double tapping skips the track. Triple tapping goes to the previous track and swiping up or down controls the volume. One thing I have noticed is that if you have long hair like I do and it's wet, it will constantly fire miss inputs on the touchpad and it can get annoying sometimes that I guess wearing these with wet hair is probably not a common use case. You're probably fine. Now for the last trick, it's time to talk about everyone's favorite copyrighted material thief slash plagiarism machine, generative AI. Meta has baked their Llama 2 LLM directly into the glasses or into the into the MetaView app, and it can be activated by saying, hey Meta, or by holding down on the touchpad. Although I'm not sure how the touchpad gesture works if you have your Spotify account connected because that gesture activates the Spotify DJ when you have it connected, I'm not sure. This is still listening to me. Sorry, but I'm unsure what you're referring to. Can you please provide more context or clarify your question?
You can use the voice assistant to do things like call people, take photos and videos, check the battery, control the audio, etc. But you can also use it to ask questions about basically anything. It does have access to the internet for real-time information, and it's usually pretty accurate. I have had a few times where it's hallucinated something, like when it falsely claimed you could configure the M2 MacBook Air with a whopping 24 gigs of storage. But it's pretty decent at simple questions. It also does have contextual capabilities, which comes in handy for connected questions. When you aren't using the AI, the voice assistant is very fast, especially when taking photos and videos. Hey Meta, take a photo. That is fast. The voice transcription is clearly done on glasses because there is no way it could phone home that quickly. I don't know exactly what processor these have. I forgot to research it. Let me, let me try something. Hey Meta, what processor is used in the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses that came out in 2023? Sorry, but I cannot find any information about the Okay, using Meta AI is about as fast as using the ChatGPT voice feature in the mobile app. I haven't been able to get access to the multimodal AI beta yet, which is unfortunate, uh, but honestly, considering the AI is supposed to be locked to uh, the US, I'll take what I can get. For anyone outside of the US, by the way, who wants the AI features, it's as easy as just turning on a US VPN and reopening the Meta View app until it tells you to turn on the AI. After it's activated, you don't need to keep the VPN on. Although I have noticed that it does struggle with non-American accents and it isn't uncommon for it to just completely misunderstand what I'm saying. Now, let's talk privacy. This is one of the most critical things that Meta needed to do right on these and they've done a pretty good job. Just above your right eye, you would have noticed when I took the photo, there's a fairly bright LED indicator that blinks whenever a photo or video is being taken. If this indicator light is covered, the glasses refuse to take a photo or video, giving you a warning chime and a spoken announcement in the glasses, while also giving you a notification in the MetaView app. This light is definitely much easier to notice compared to the first generation Ray-Ban stories, but I've definitely noticed that it still goes unnoticed a lot of the time. I've been able to record in public or while collecting packages, paying for things without anyone taking notice or saying a word, and it even goes unnoticed when I'm out with friends and using them who would be way more likely to say something to me. Along with the camera indicator light, the glasses also have a physical power slider on the left temple to completely cut power, as opposed to just closing them and putting them in standby mode. Outside of physical privacy, there's a few controls in the app to protect your privacy from Meta and others wearing your glasses. The verified session feature, if enabled, makes you verify that it's you wearing your glasses before you send or receive a text, make a call, or share a photo or video. You verify once after putting on the glasses by accepting a notification on your phone, and your session remains verified while you have the glasses on, similar to how passcodes work on the Apple Watch. Voice recording and transcription sharing is also opt-in, and can be turned off without limiting the functionality of the glasses in any way. If recording and transcription sharing is on, you can easily view and listen to your data within the MetaView app and delete it if necessary. One thing I did want to quickly touch on before the end is the battery life. While these are just sitting on your head and doing nothing, they literally sip power. But doing anything, like taking photos or listening to audio, um, it uses a fair bit. For moderate use, they'll last around four hours, and heavy use might drop that down to two to three hours. However, like I mentioned earlier, it only takes around 20 minutes to charge the glasses halfway, and the charging case gives the glasses eight full charges. I want to set your expectations before I tell you the price. You're buying Ray-Bans, which are not known for their affordable pricing, and then you're shoving cameras, microphones, speakers, processors, storage, etc. into them. These are not cheap at all. For both styles, those being the Wayfarers and the Headliners, the glasses start at $299 US dollars and $449 in Australia. For the configuration I'm wearing, it'll set you back $539 Australian dollars. I can't find US pricing for these. Um, there's no website that tells you the price when they're out of stock. I'll keep my eye out and I'll add the US pricing in a pinned comment if I find it. So, do I recommend them? Absolutely. I love these things. I adore these things and they are one of my favorite pieces of tech that I own. It is priceless being able to capture moments and things happening around me without needing to stop living there and just pull out my phone. I hate to be all phone bad guru because, you know, especially considering I'm trying to build a YouTube career, but it is really nice to not need to have my phone in my hand sometimes. And of course, everything else is just great. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you know what button to hit. Maybe consider subscribing if you really liked the video. I've got a review on Meta's other wearable device, the Quest 3, coming out after this video, so you might want to subscribe to not miss out. And I mentioned this, but I'm going to be cool like all the other YouTubers for this video. I shot the A-roll on an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.